We must give attention to our inner life. Mm -hmm. And we really got to figure out how to unclutter our spiritual hearts to reduce the chaos of all of the inner voices that are saying, do this, be this, go there, buy that, and really begin to hear the voice of the one who matters. Welcome to Practicing the Practices, a learning and experiential podcast geared towards helping you apprentice with Jesus. My name is Brad, and I'm here with my co-host, Casey, and we are so excited about season two of the podcast, and we're kicking it off with four episodes on the practice of simplicity. But before we get to all of that wonderful content and practices, Casey, we are recording this On the tail end of Snowmageddon 2024 (laughs) in East Tennessee, Uh, we've meant to record these episodes. You uh, were under the weather a bit, and then we got eight to 10 inches of snow, which turned to ice. Our kids haven't been to school. And so we have been nailing it as far as simplicity goes, right? It's like Groundhog Day. Get up, and there's nowhere to go. I've spent very little money, Uh, but... What has been maybe the high, low? First of all, welcome to season two, Casey. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, What has been maybe the high, low of your stay-at-home week in Snowmageddon 2024? Yeah, it's been some forced simplicity. And there really is nothing that makes me feel like simplicity, embodied simplicity more than snow, right? There is something so beautiful about Mm. falling snow. It's so quiet. Everything kind of closes down. Um, so just all, just the excitement of the snow has been really fun. My kids had a lot of fun and we of course like, you know, watched movies and stayed in our PJs and went sledding and all the fun things. And so that's been the really fun part of it. But then you start to get a little stir crazy. Everybody starts, I noticed, you know, a weekend, everybody started to get a little crabby with each other, Yeah, a little irritated. We need some space. Yeah. We all just are real cooped up here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, we've certainly enjoyed it and also I felt cooped up like we need some space. I think maybe one of the highs for me, uh, my daughter started like searching the internet for cool desserts and she started making like s'more chocolate chip cookie treats. So it's like a graham cracker, a marshmallow, a Hershey's bar with cookie dough that then gets cooked on top of it. So like the cookie becomes like the wrapping of the s'more. I'm a little offended I've gotten none of these. I mean, not that you would have been able to get them to me. Well, the 10 inches of snow got in the way. <laughs> I'm, but you I'm know what? putting it out there right now. Riley, I would like some of these cookies delivered at some point, please. Message received. I You can expect these probably on a birthday or some other moment of celebration Cannot wait. coming up. Uh, and then the, the low point is, so I didn't have like the, we don't have any snow equipment. And so like today I was literally with a Matic for our listeners who don't use a lot of Maddox. That's like, yeah, I don't know what kind that of is. like an I axe, don't know what that is. except instead of it being a blade that's horizontal, it's vertical. It's made to like dig ditches with, oh. and I am like hacking at my driveway to remove six and seven inch chunks of ice. It's wild. We just were not built for that in the South. Yeah, I know. And I, I'm from Southern California, so I don't know what that tool is. And I also, this was literally the first time I've ever driven in snow and ice. And my kids thought I was going to crash. They were very scared. Well, as you drive around town, <laughs> there's about a hundred people who did. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You're not I feel, I feel accomplished to have made it home in one piece a couple times. All right. Well, Welcome to season two. Let's jump right into it. We are talking about simplicity for several weeks. Now, Casey, uh, for our listeners who may have grown up the way I did, they might not even have a category for simplicity as a spiritual practice or even as, as a part of how what it means to follow the way of Jesus. Uh, prayer, category for that, reading the Bible, church, small group, etc., But simplicity is actually really vital. It's essential. And so to kind of help us right out of the gate, let's define what we're talking about. What is simplicity? I really love this quote by Hans Hoffman. There's a lot of ways we could define simplicity, but he really seems to hit the nail on the head. He says, the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. 
So, so simplicity really starts with us taking an honest and curious look at where we're investing our energy mm. because everything we own, every item on our calendar and every thought we have, every relationship in our life, all of these are places that we're investing our energy. And as humans, we have finite energy. So simplicity is really first about understanding what we value and then how are we going to prioritize where we spend our energy. That's really helpful. So for our listeners who uh, a good metaphor, a good visual image helps them see this, uh, we were talking, neither one of us are really gardening folks, but you have a pretty good uh, gardening metaphor of how simplicity is much like pruning to the gardener. Yeah. And pruning is a concept that even if we're not gardeners, we're familiar with it in the Bible. We talk, the Bible talks about being pruned as part of our sanctification process. So if you think about a plant that has a couple kind of wonky branches that aren't super fruitful, or maybe, maybe they're not horrible branches, but they're just kind of a little bit dead, a little bit dried out. Mm -hmm. The plant is actually having to send so much energy to those dead, unfruitful, unhealthy parts of the tree or the plant. So if you prune those off, then all of that energy that was going to what's not really fruitful, then all of a sudden now is redirected to the parts of the plant that are fruitful. And that's why pruning, one of the reasons why pruning is so important. And in the same way in our lives, when we cut out the things that really aren't necessary, those things often for some reason tend to take up way more of our energy than the necessary things do. And so when we eliminate those unnecessary things, then the things that are fruitful can actually have the energy that they need. So helpful. So simplicity is not, you know, some sort of modern in vogue essentialism or minimalism, though some of the things we talk about may contain elements of those things, but it's also not an opposition to deep joy or pleasure. Matter of fact, we believe that God is very much pro-joy, pro-pleasure. Like the scripture is clear, simplicity is actually the pathway to deeper joy and pleasure. And one of the reasons is, is, is there's a couple of barriers uh, between deep joy and deep pleasure that have to do with simplicity. The barriers to simplicity we want to address today are, are the very barriers of complexity and the barriers of duplicity. So complexity is the easiest one for us to wrap our minds around. Our lives are so complex. Think about how our lives have changed since the invention of the smartphone, our office, our email, our banking, our social communications, all of it is with us all of the time, right? And so we very rarely ever do one thing. We're on our phones while we watch TV, a movie, while we wait in the shopping cart line. Like we, we simplicity is, is gone out with the smartphone, but also we both have high school students and they're beginning to think about their career paths. And so they, today, when you put the options of here's what you might pursue, I mean, it feels infinite and overwhelming. Uh, if you live in a town like the one we do, uh, there are so many restaurants, like it can be paralyzing to say, where do you want to go eat tonight? <laughs> right. Um, and so complexity gets in the way it clutters things. Uh, most of the things that our lives are, are wrapped up in complexion are not necessarily bad things. They're just distracting us from the big things, the, mm -hmm. the most important things. But the other area, and I'd love for you to speak to this, is this idea of duplicity. Now, when most people hear duplicity, they think of some sort of dark, malevolent evil, but actually duplicity is more a part of our regular lives than we may realize. Yeah. I first heard this idea that the opposite of simplicity is duplicity from Richard Foster. He wrote a whole book on simplicity. That's really great. Highly recommend you check it out. And he wrote that and it really stuck with me. Like that really made me go, huh, and pause. And he basically talks about the idea that duplicity or pursuing mutually exclusive goals or being about more than one thing is the opposite of simplicity. Either mm. we're focused in one direction or we're doing multiple things at once or the things that we say matter to us actually aren't the way that we're spending our time and that creates that makes us duplicitous. So in his book, Celebration of Discipline, he says this, that the opposite of simplicity isn't the accumulation of stuff. Mm. The opposite of simplicity is duplicity. It's about being 
about more than one thing, yeah. having competing desires, pursuing mutually exclusive goals. That is another way of describing integrity. Integrity is not just about moral character, although that would be part of it. It's about the alignment between what we say are our values, what we say is, is what we're really about, and how we actually go about living our lives. And so really, that's what we're trying to get to in this conversation on simplicity, is many of us have aspirational lives. We want to follow Jesus. We want to be devoted parents. We want to be compassionate hospitable neighbors. We want to be people of prayer, people with a non-anxious presence, but our lives are oftentimes dictated and controlled and planned not by those aspirational values, but by the ever-flowing current of our desires. Uh, our des appetites or desires take us this way and then this way, and here this thing comes up. And what we're talking about is what does it look like for us to really define the things that matter most, and then organize in our life to live in light of that. So in moving towards practice, because that's what uh, the focus of our podcast is about, we want to talk just a moment about getting a vision for kingdom life. And so we're going to talk over the next few episodes about simplicity in our schedule, simplicity in our possession, simplicity in our relationships. But before we can get to those external expressions of simplicity, we must give attention to our inner life. And we really got to figure out how to unclutter our spiritual hearts to reduce the chaos of all of the inner voices that are saying, do this, be this, go there, buy that, and really begin to hear the voice of of the one who matters. So we want to begin today by defining reality. Where is your life, including your spiritual life, unnecessarily complex? Now, Casey, there's parts of our lives that just are going to be complex. Maybe a, a tricky family relationship, maybe the dynamic between you and your teenager. You may have a job that is complex, but we oftentimes add layers of unnecessary complexity to that. So where are our lives unnecessarily complex? Or where is there just spiritual clutter, this duplicity that you talked about, that it might not be intended duplicity, but the our aspirational selves is not our actual selves? Yeah, I think it's so important to know what you were saying, that we have to kind of figure out where our inner clutter is, where, what our inner values are before we go and try to affect our outward reality. And I think most people, when they think about simplifying, they want to go straight to decluttering their garage. They want to go straight to cutting stuff out of their schedule. And those things are important and good. And we are going to talk about those in upcoming episodes, but really we're not going to be able to do that effectively and in a kingdom way. If we don't first understand what are we valuing? How does that align with God's values? And then from that reality, then we align our outer world. So I love this quote by Mindy Caligari and Lance Witt. It says, simplicity means taking action to align one's exterior world with one's interior values and commitment to God. What eliminates complexity and duplicity is getting to the place where my external decisions and behaviors are in sync with my internal values and priorities. So today we're really focused on those internal values and priorities so that we can take that those values and really make changes in our outer world. So closing, what we're going to do is we're going to provide three clear next steps for this inner work. And so challenge number one is for you to write down, get a piece of paper, get a computer, whatever that works for you, write down the things that matter most. Let me put it this way. Describe what it would mean in your own words to seek first the kingdom of God. What is a vision of a life that imitates Jesus look like? Try to reduce that to three to seven sentences. We don't, we're not looking for a book here. 
What you're trying to do is, is have something simple and concrete enough that you can wrap your mind around it, but you can also begin to take some actionable steps. So step number one is to actually define in your own words, maybe go read the Sermon on the Mount. It'd be a great starting place to really kind of stir up some thoughts. It's, it's this countercultural life that Jesus describes in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. What is a vision for a uh, life focused on seeking first the kingdom of God look like? And then step two, how do you need to begin to adjust your life, maybe your schedule, maybe your budget, maybe your relationships, your priorities, to design a lifestyle that aligns with what you say matters most? This is an inward work, Casey, that the aim is to produce an outward uh, obedience. Yeah. Richard Foster, again, really cautions on trying to separate this inner work and this outer work from one another. He talks about in his book, Celebration of a Discipline, he says, the Christian discipline of simplicity is an inward reality that results in an outward lifestyle. Both the inward and the outward aspects of simplicity are essential. We deceive ourselves if we believe we can possess the inward reality without it having a profound effect on how we live. And to attempt to arrange an outward lifestyle of simplicity without the inward reality leads to deadly legalism. So I think we see that more in our culture. People try to produce the outward yes. simplicity without ever doing the inner work. But the, the reverse is also true. We could kind of create some simplicity inside of us, but it never actually manifests into our life. Both of those Richard Foster warns against, and I think that's really wise of him. And this is precisely why step number three is so important. You have got to find a quiet and unhurried place and space to listen to the Spirit of God. It's impossible to declutter and untangle the complexity of your life in the noise and hurry that surrounds us. This was true of Jesus. When you read the Gospels, Jesus so frequently would be involved in, in ministry that was life-giving, but also life-draining. And the scripture says so often that he withdrew from those noisy, hurried places where so much was demanded of him to quiet spaces so that even the Son of God could drown out the noise of a thousand competing voices to hear the voice that matters. So here's the challenge. Set aside a full hour. Take a full 60 minutes where you're distraction-free. No TV in the background, uh, no other people around. Like Get alone so that you can actually invite the voice of the Holy Spirit to help you look within your life to see some of the spaces that maybe are more cluttered, where there's maybe duplicity that you didn't even realize was there, and allow the Spirit of God to begin His work of transforming your inner life so that your outer life might look like Jesus. And because this is the Practicing the Practices podcast, and we don't want to leave you without any practice today, we're going to do a little mini version of this today, just for one minute. We're going to take a moment to pause, to quiet down. Maybe if you're in a place where you're able to close your eyes, you let your eyes close, you feel your feet on the floor, take a few deep breaths. And we're just going to give you a 60 second pause. And as you are sitting in this quiet place, consider these two questions. Number one, what is do you value most in life? And number two, how does your life today either reflect or contradict what you value most? Here's 60 seconds of silence.
Thanks, Casey. I think I can speak for you when I say we want to delve into simplicity because we want more for our people, for our listeners, for our families. We believe Jesus wants more for you. But again, in the countercultural, upside-down reality of the life of Jesus, more comes with less. So until our next episode, thanks so much for listening to Practicing the Practices. Make sure you subscribe, share this episode with a friend whom you think might benefit from it, and we'll see you next time. Grace and peace. Peace.